give you everything you deserve, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh praise, praise honor, honor, glory, glory, glory it all belongs to you. Nobody like you, no. Yeah. Yeah. From the birds that sing. In the tallest trees to the human life of you and me from the desert sands to the place we stand he is god of all he is It's not. 
Hi, this is Prophet Blaine, and you're listening to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. It's two. Hi, my name is Carolyn Abrams, and my show is Vintage Time. Listen to me every Saturday, 12 noon, right here on Worship Center Radio. From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. In the morning when I rise, I will see you, see you. In the day Run after you, run after you, like the desert long to be filled with water. My soul is thirsting for your presence, and to get back to that place of what you designed me to do. Come on, worshipers. Hello, hello, everybody. So welcome those who are viewing through our live stream at TWCN. Welcome those who are viewing through Ustream at Worship Center Radio. And those who are listening through um, Worship Center Radio. (laughs) For those who heard it, that is Juan Johnson, our producer in the studio. We are so excited. This is the first time we've ever done something like this. So we're like on all platforms. This is like the coolest. The only thing we don't have right now is my Periscope. But you can go to Periscope. Yeah, I got my phone somewhere. Um, okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we're, we're, you know what? We're going to hook it up ne- uh, tomorrow because we're doing this for three days. This is so exciting. But you can go to um, Dr. Ruddleburg Periscope. Uh, We did do Periscope this morning with one of our broadcasters, Pastor Velma Biggers, uh, who is the host of Believe Again. And so she was with us at Double Tree Novi. We had an awesome time. I do want you to check out uh, the replay of the broadcast. You can go to my fan page at um, Dr. Brother Bird on Facebook. uh, Or if you are a Periscoper, stop by my Periscope and you should be able to see the replay awesome replay I mean, awesome awesome program today basically going over the entire book of Esther we stopped at the point of how to approach the king I'm not going to give all the goodies away because I want you to hear for yourself in the studio with me as promised drum roll Prophet Blaine is here whoop, whoop, whoop. he told me not to do it so I did it softly <laughs> excited to see you know, Prophet Blaine is uh, a unique prophet because I call him the prophet of old, because 
so many things he have said. He gets frustrated because it looks like, Lord, you show me this stuff. Why is it not happening like today? And oftentimes, a lot uh, we have found that things that God has given him definitely going to pass, but it may be. It takes a lot of time, but you, you know, three or four years. So you know, not everybody necessarily realizes this, but even if you look at the Book of Revelation, which I don't want to get a whole bunch into today, um, but you will. You, we notice that a lot of the prophecies are, you know, in, in that case, I mean, decades and centuries in advance. Some of the prophecies that have not come to pass yet, but I know for me as a prophet, sometimes it's difficult to, un, you know, to differentiate the two because to when when the Lord shows you that it's a right now thing, um, like you've traveled to the future and you're there already as it's happening. Um, so sometimes it can be difficult to explain what you're seeing, and none of the parts are in place for it to, to happen. It's true, and we know this very well from the Old Testament. Oftentimes, the Lord will speak to the prophets, and we're still watching things unfold yes. in, in, in our world today. So the Word of God is true. It is dependable. If He says it, it's going down just like He said. I am excited to have Prophet Blaine here for the Esther Project. So for those who are new to the Esther concept, it's coming out of the book of Esther in the Bible, uh, chapters 1 through 10. And the story of Esther to me is just, it's romantic. <laughs> it's heroic. It's just an awesome book. So um, it was a young lady who became queen and she eventually was in the position to bring deliverance to a people, which is Israel. And so I love this whole agenda thing that the Lord has given me in the morning. We come together corporately uh, in a physical place. And then, of course, we're online media for the rest of the day, including tonight, tonight, we're going to have Tammy, evangelist Tammy Laster with us. And she's going to be on uh, the conference line where you can call in and we can pray together. But today we have uh, Prophet Blaine. I, I, I specifically asked the Lord to show me the different men that, he wanted to be a part of this project. And Prophet Blaine um, comes from such diversity in the Lord that it was a perfect choice, I believe. He and I were talking about some of the things we we're going to talk about today. And I was just asking him, if you were king, <laughs> how would you want to be approached? I mean, I want to come from the natural standpoint because a lot of times um, people are not connected to God in a way to really understand who he is and his character so sometimes it's helpful to compare natural things with spiritual things and so I was just wondering okay so you're a king and you state there is it's law it's decree that unless you summons uh an individual they can't come in your presence and so I mean to be funny that sounds like something I would do too <laughs> So, I'm um, looking at the fact that here's a young lady. We have a crisis here. This wicked Haman, this evil person has made a decision that based upon the fact that he was not served. So, his ego was bruised because it was known that when you came in the presence of Haman, who was not the king, by the way. He's a subject in the kingdom. But anyway, who um, was told, I'm sorry, there's a decree that when Haman comes in your presence, you are to bow down. And so Israel only bows down to God, okay, to the true living God, yes. Yah. And Yah is Hebrew, so for God. But um, so Mordecai was not going to subject himself to that decree and bow down to a person. And because he didn't, it infuriated Haman, and Haman made a decision that he wanted to just eradicate all the Jews. Now, Mordecai politely lets Esther know, hey, <laughs> who knows if you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, if you think you're going to escape because you're in the kingdom, no, God has sent a deliverer for somewhere else. But you and your family will be destroyed. Okay? So, hmm, okay, if I perish, I perish. Hey, Send out a decree. I want people in Shushan to pray with me three days, no food or water. And I, myself, and the rest of the people around me, my handmaids, we're going to do the same. Meanwhile, the three days is up. It's her time to come before a king 
who we know was not a Christian king, and in hopes that she will find favor. So here you are, the king. You haven't requested her nothing. <laughs> but she comes in the court waiting to speak with you. And it's been decreed that if you hadn't summer, summons that person or give them favor. And at that time, um, holding out the scepter to the queen. Now, mind you, she's a queen too, you know, but it's rules are rules. So holding out the scepter to the queen to come into your presence, she could be killed. You know, I, for something like this, I really have to, you know, obviously I wasn't always for real saved. Um, but I'd have to think back on, regardless of, you know, putting aside feeling the Holy Spirit, putting aside feeling the presence of God. Um, you know, it, a law, the law was the law. But ultimately, if I'm king, I'm still king. Why? And so, yes, laws are put in place. And yes, the king, you know, for, for the obvious reasons of not appearing weak and not appearing um, like he couldn't do his job, he had to follow the law, you know, follow the laws, even the ones that he put in place. But for me, it would have been strictly from a humility standpoint. If you're coming to me like that, you obviously have an insane amount of guts knowing that you could be slaughtered on the spot. You could have been killed on the spot and that would have been it. Um, I wouldn't have shown any favor to someone that would have walked in to my presence like that if they, if they didn't have humility. If it was from an arrogant standpoint, that would have been it for me. I'd have been like, that you're done. Deuces, see you later. But... Knowing the fact, you know, I don't, I mean, yes, she was the queen. I don't know how well he knew her. But for me, from a, a purely emotional standpoint, I would have had to realize the fact that she doesn't come to me often for, for anything. She doesn't ask for anything that often, but this is obviously something very important and special to her. Um, so from a purely emotional standpoint, I would have had to bow down or acknowledge the fact that she came in to my presence to ask for this. And when you say bind down, you mean you would have her humility would have drawn our humility in you. Yes, it, it, it's it would to me it would have been a pure stance of you came into into the, this this court where obviously you really had supposedly had no business being, and I had to honor the fact that you took this risk for a people, and for that I would have to give grace. Powerful, you know the scripture came to mind. Um, I, relationships is important and it has to be important to God because it's in the word. It says a meek and quiet spirit is of great price in the eyes of God. And if you can't win them in your words, you win them in your conduct. And that is in first Peter. And it talks about the wife, how she's to win her husband. And I believe conduct is important. Like you said, from a standpoint of this is the natural aspect. We haven't even went into the spiritual part. But that natural aspect, her humility would have drawn our humility in you. Her reverence, her respect. Especially after you already had a wife that couldn't care less about coming into your presence. And so, you know, even when I have to look completely from an emotional perspective standpoint not a spiritual standpoint because i have to now think of the fact that he wasn't saved but from a completely emotional standpoint i had to think about the fact that i now had a wife that couldn't care less about having reverence for me or having any kind of reverence is such a difficult word to understand it's like this big giant elephant in the room but for me the reverence would have been that you you care enough about me there's enough respect on who I am and what I stand for that you would come when I call you to come right and so the previous wife didn't do that mm -hmm. and so that naturally would have played a part in it and I really believe that the king would have had to love his bride in order to say hold on a second stop everybody's about to get ready to kill her stop and I, I'm sure everybody in the courtroom was like, wait a minute, she broke the law. Okay, but I make the law. Come on. So stop. What? Um, and when you said king is saved, we know that Christ had not came yet to make the sacrifice for salvation. However, he didn't serve the same God as Israel. Mm -hmm. He served false gods. And so because he served false gods, he definitely was not in the mindset but that there was Israel pride, was. But there's pride there too. And so for even, I mean, there... The, I mean, I'm sure kings and queens now have a, a level of pride as well. But when you, if you read the story of Esther, it's not hard for you to pick up the fact that the king had pride. So for him to even subject himself to 
someone lower than him, quote unquote. Even if it is his queen, she merely got that title because he needed a female companion, he needed a wife. It's all about look good. Um, so for him to even subject himself to that point of not having her oft is that just shows the favor of God mm. on on the the Jewish people. Mm. Um, you know, it 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 would only take God for mo- to, to move somebody's heart like that, for them to say, you know what, I understand. This is the laws and rules and regulations that were broke, but I'm going to show grace here. Yeah. And even while I'm showing grace, I'm not offing you, but I'm not offing your people either. And that's powerful because um, it's funny when you said it, the uh, God to change a person or extend favor to a whole race of people because once God claims you as his own, your claim <laughs> and the divine protection and favor and love that comes with that is immeasurable. I want to say the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord and like rivers of water, he turns in what direction he wants it to go. And so her consulting the king of kings and the lord of lords allowing that impartation of wisdom because see when you're fasting and praying you're denying yourself your flesh has to come under subjection i find when i fast and pray i hear better i hear more yeah, but clearly. you're also you're also taking the time to spend time with god see many people will do the fasting thing lent or whatever the case may be and they deprive themselves of something but there's not you're not pouring back into yourself by spending time in the Word or spending time praying or whatever the case may be. The whole point of Lent is not just to deprive yourself. That's foolish. If you're going to deprive yourself of something by fasting and praying, you're fasting and praying. People forget the praying part and pouring back into them part because, I mean, if you're just going to fast, you're still going to be hungry. If there's not a, a supernatural satisfaction to whatever it is you're giving up, whether it be hunger, whatever the case may be, you're wasting time. Right, and you're giving up food, natural food, for spiritual for food. Spiritual. So you should be reading your word, uh, uh, surrounding yourself in worship and prayer. So those are elements or components that's important when you're fasting. It's not just not eating. You're feeding your spirit the word. Well, you're communicating with God and communing with him and allowing his presence, like you said, to supernaturally yes. uphold you during that time. Well, you know, what people don't understand is we're we're multifaceted beings, if I can call it that. We we have an emotional side. We have a spiritual side. We have a physical side. One is not more important than the other. You can have food, but if you have no spiritual food, you're screwed. If you have spiritual food and you have no natural food, you're going to have a problem. And so there's all these aspects of how God already created us to being that are important. So in, in the case of the king, the emotional aspect had to have been touched on yeah you have someone that you love someone that you that you closer with than you are hopefully anybody else regardless of the fact that you make the laws and regulations or whatever of the land um there's an emotional part that had to be tapped into here something that god knows very well how to touch it don't it don't it, it takes a split second for something to happen and god can capture you and say okay now i've got you where i need you to be and this is what i need you to do Woo. That's good. Split second. You know, I was thinking about now going to the spiritual side. How much more is does it please God's heart when we humble ourselves? Because the Bible said he resists the pride and give grace to the humble. So when we humble ourselves coming before him, how much more uh, will he extend to us what we have need of? I thought about Hezekiah, and it's funny when you talked about the um, rules and regulations. It was stated to him to get his things together because he was going to die. Now, he could have did exactly what he heard or do what he did, which was cry out to God, brought God into remembrance of the things that he did and uh, on God's behalf and asked for mercy. And the Lord extended that mercy. He humbled himself. He asked for it. Now, the Lord had already put a decree out. He already stated to him, this is what's going to happen. But because of the grace, uh, the Lord extended the grace through the humility. I oftentimes, you know, the, the Bible said a soft answer turn away wrath. I believe a lot of natural uh, situations um, can be resolved in how we carry ourselves and how we speak to one another and how we treat to one another. The Bible said pursue peace with all men. And I believe that 
uh, it's important. Even in speaking the truth, it says speak the truth in love. It's important in how we treat one another. What do you think about that? Absolutely. It's very important how we treat one another. You know, um, I'll just touch on this. Uh, it's a whole message unto itself that surprisingly the Lord is using little old prophet Blaine who isn't married to to minister to me about this. But um, how many marriages end because people are prideful? Because we get to a point of, well, I'm right and I'm right. How many marriages just could have been saved and don't get saved because people have a want-to-be-right spirit or just are prideful about whatever the case may be. And pride can easily slip in. It can be as easy as the Lord showing you something in somebody that needs to be dealt with your spouse. Well, instead of you sticking to what God said, you, it becomes a, a, a self-righteous thing. It becomes a prideful thing. So it is very important that we pursue peace all the way around. The devil will come at people with anything and everything he can. Any flaw that he can smell on somebody, he will come at you to try and wipe you out with that flaw, to try and destroy things, to try and rip things apart. And we know that he, anything that is made in God's image, anything that is like God, anything that God loves, he hates. It, it's straight to the point. He's, he doesn't, you know, doesn't hide the fact that that what it is. And I believe it's very important that we pursue peace in all things. Yes. Because it's not just peace for the our surroundings, but peace for us as well. Amen. Um, hmm. I love the fact that you talked about how the king would have felt uh, since he had a wife that had to be removed because she was dishonorable. I believe that in this season, in this time, it's very important to get to know God and build a relationship with him from the biblical standpoint. Too many people are getting familiar with him. They're treating him like he's their friend or brother. He is a friend to us. But there are boundaries, I believe, that needs to be set in how people talk to God and how people approach God. Um, and her approach is what minister to the king. Our approach has to minister to him as well. Uh, we still have to recognize and him allowing us to have a relationship with him. He is still ruler over the universe. That just blows my mind when I think about a supreme being choosing me to partake in plans that he set for this world to allow me to be a part of of uh, making things better or be a part of encouragement or be a part of healing or uh, be a part of deliverance for someone. Anything that he's allowed me to do blows my mind and it causes me to still be in awe of him. I think people forget the rev the reverence part of God. And um, while, while I totally agree with you and that people become too familiar with God, there are people that feel that they know God and actually they know nothing about him at all. Yes. Um, there's people that pro that profess to be believers, and though they believe in God, uh, there's a much more deeper relationship they could have with God. I mean, it, it's no different than me saying, well, I know the person downstairs, and I know the person downstairs, talk to them every day, see them every day, but is there a relationship there? No. I'm not, I, there's not there's not that closeness. And I feel that it is very important that we have that closeness with with God, um, cause you know, I, I, I'm not convinced that just believing in God is going to just get me into heaven. Yes. You, when, you know, if you happen to ask God to come into your heart just before you die, will you make it to heaven? Yes, I believe so. But you're still going to make it to heaven and you're still going to have to get to know who God is. It doesn't just end there. There is life after this. There, it may not be in this body, but there is a life in in a perfect body, there's life in a in a perfect world. There's life in a in a place that's different than this, which I'm sure it it mimics this. I can't guarantee that, but I'm sure it mimics this because this is what God created. So why not recreate perfection? Right, because well, um, in the Lord's prayer, it says, "On earth as it is in heaven." In this earth, there should be a reflection of heaven it's not always a reflection but it should be a reflection in heaven and i do agree once you accept christ to really understand who god is 
uh, it's a process that we walk out. We learn through his word. We learn through prayer. We learn through even circumstances. Cir- oh, yes. Talk about it. <laughs> God use, you know, God uses a, a variety of things to teach us different things, whether it be the facets of who he is, whether it be uh, learning to stick out on something when God said he's going to do something. There's so many different things. And I'm sure as as queen, for Esther knowing that, you know, she's taking a risk going before this this incredible ruler. Yes, he's her husband, but he could still, with a word, put her out. And so I'm sure it was very stressful for her. And she really had to trust God and know, if I'm going in here, I'm going to need you to protect me. Because if I, you don't, this man is going to kill me. <laughs> right. And all the people. Right. So... That's a lot of weight on somebody's shoulders. Right. The the blood of an entire generation or entire people could be on you if you don't do right. Right. And so the prayer and fasting, I'm sure, was... It, to me, that speaks of a people that, that are that are calling out to God and, and coming before the Lord. Just as though she had to go before the king, they were going before the king to, to plead. And so, you know, whatever it is their prayers were, I can imagine it went something to the lines of, Lord, please be on our side. You know what this man is going to do or what plans to do. We need your protection. We need your hand. We need, we need you to come through for us. And also, I'm sure that they quoted his word. The Bible said he watches over his word. Just like Hezekiah, even as Hezekiah went to that wall and said, Lord, remember. You know, Kim Clement did such a a beautiful teaching on what Hezekiah did. But he went went before God and said, but God, remember. Remember what, what I have done. Remember what you have used me to do. And remember how I have come through. I'm sure in the same way, the Israelites went before God and said, but remember, yeah, remember what you, you said. said. Come on, this is what you've said. But rem- and and God doesn't lie. Mm-mm. Yes, we put him in remembrance. It's not us putting God in remembrance. It's not because he forgot right. what he did, but it, it brings it to the forefront and says, "But hold on a second. Remember, you said this." Mm-hmm. And I believe God feels just like what we feel. So in bringing that remembrance to Him, he, it had to have brought a. Yes, I do remember saying that to you. And even so, bringing it to the remembrance, confessing what he said in faith, because faith pleases him. So when I'm saying something to you, faith that you is said, a, faith is trust. Mm-hmm. Let's just call it what it is. If you're saying to God that I have faith that you're going to do this for me, it means I trust you. Now we haven't got to the point yet where when God says I'm going to do this, we just go sweet, He's going to do it. We get tried and tested, and we freak out, and you know. There's, some have greater f- faith than others. Some have lef- less faith than others. But we're talking about there's a king here overseeing you who basically is threatening to remove everybody. Um, and you are going before God and saying, hey, listen, um, can we talk for a minute? You mm-hmm. said you would do A, B, C, and D, and I'm expecting you to come through for me. Just, as, just like she went before the king, they went before the king. They went before the king of the universe, of the earth, but still they had to go before the king. That's right. And that's what this fast is all about. That's funny. Putting God in remembrance of his word, reminding him of promises that he's made to his people. Uh, for the promises that he makes are yea and amen. And um, so many in this hour need deliverance. We have the water crisis in Flint. We're happy for those who are just tuning in. Um, this is, uh, I'm Dr. Rhoda and Prophet Blaine, and we're talking about the Esther Project. So we have the issue in Flint, the water situation, which, <laughs> which by the way, when you first heard about it, you said it's not just in Flint. Watch. It's, it's going to come out. It's in other, other areas. And um, we have the black uh, people, uh, black Lives matter. We have so many things going on. We have a change of government that's about to happen this see, year. I need you to hear what you're saying by the Spirit. Uh, what is deliverance? Is what being set free from something. So many of many people go to church and say, "Oh, I need deliverance from 
blah 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 whatever whatever it is you're dealing with deliver deliverance is not such a big word it's just you're being delivered from you're being set free from so while you're saying we need to get we need to get delivered from this water problem we need to be set free from this principality that's trying to control this yes this principality this governmental principality this principality is over the waters this prince there's, there's all these principalities are trying to control what's taking place but controlling the mind of uh, um, the, the mind of man i'm sorry whatever the case may be we, we're asking to be set free esther went before the king so that her people could be set free from this judgment mm, that's good yeah yeah i do and that's funny because in the detroit prayer revival we're going to talk more about judgment that's coming on after this this won't that won't be live stream you're going to have to go to worshipcenterradio.net and click on the image where it says Detroit Prayer Revival. You can listen in. Oh, I'm sorry. It will be Ustream. Yeah, it'll be Ustream. You can watch it on Ustream. And you can listen from um, TuneIn. Yes. And so, but anyway, that's that's on our website. So, back back to you. That's good. Judgment, right? So, it's being said. It's really, I mean, so, the... The wicked fool, whatever his name was. Amen. Yes, right. <laughs> so he has his judgment over the people because he, he has a bruised ego. He has an issue with them. He doesn't like them. And really, probably if Esther hadn't been crowned queen, he probably wouldn't even have thought twice about them. Um, and then mind you, we go way back, 400 years past, and there was an issue. God told Saul to destroy the Agadites, which is his family members, his great ancestors. And Saul destroyed everybody but a couple of folks because he was trying to please Israel. So the Lord was so upset about it. Not upset because he was upset because he disobeyed him. But see, in the, the disobedience caused chaos that traveled throughout up to now. So um, thank God for Samuel who called it out and handled the situation. Um, you have to read more in, uh, in the word about that. But it, again, it's just dealing with. This another set of disobedience. The consequences that comes with disobedience. I believe that's why judgment comes often. See, the disobedience is not so much the I told you to do this and you didn't do it and now I'm angry with you. Mm -hmm. The disobedience is you didn't do what I told you to do or you did what I told you not to do. And now here is what's had. This is what I was trying to prevent. Right. By telling you to do something. Right. And because you decided to do it or not to do it, depending on what the Lord said, now you have to deal with this. Now you're coming before me and saying, hold on, God, this chaos. Lord, we need help in such and such. We, but I already tried to help you. What? You could have prevented this. You could have stopped this before it ever came about. It wasn't necessary. I wasn't just, try, I wasn't just telling you to kill people because I was trying to be cruel. That's not, that's not it at all. But if you had done what I told you to do, we wouldn't have this problem. Yes. Yeah, disobedience opens up a lot. So in a world today where there's much judgment, there's uh, decisions that have to be made. We need Our last program where we were on um, In Time Move of God is a program that you and I host together. Yes. And you were talking about the importance of praying about government, about leadership. Um, we definitely want uh, a president that has a pliable heart to God that will listen and get instructions on how to rule over the people according to Absolutely. the desire of the Lord. So I'm hearing a lot of um, candidates professing to be Christians, but it's in what you do, not what you say. Yeah, the professing to be Christian part doesn't mean anything because all the candidates use something to their advantage. Well, they'll use a race issue to their advantage. They'll use a poverty line thing to their advantage. I mean, it, they use so many different things to their advantage. And I've yet to come across something that is so difficult to deal with as politics. I mean, other than belief and religion, politics seems to top that because it's a popularity thing. It's not really, do you really believe this person is going to do right? by the by everybody or do are you just voting for them because it's a popular vote mm. are you voting for a party because it's the right thing or are you voting for a party because it's a popular vote mm. do or do we really have to be especially in the united states we're very stuck to one party versus the other right uh, and there's people that vote one party regardless that's true <laughs> which i think is retarded because if you come across a, a leader that is in that party that's the wrong leader, you're just going to continue voting for them because you're married to a party. That's not really the wisest decision. Right. 
but it's not really the wisest decision to vote for the wrong person either. I'm convinced that people do not pray. They just pick one side or the other, and that's kind of what they go with. And this is definitely the time to pray. It is the time time to pray, because whereas you could have voted Democrat before, Wait, let me turn this around because otherwise it's going to not go the right way. If you voted Republican before, (laughs) what if the candidate that God had now and that he wanted to be president is a Democrat? Are you not going to vote or are you going to be disobedient and vote for the person that God isn't aligning to be president? That's good. I couldn't really say Democrat and Republican because then it, you know, it it just never mind. Thank thank goodness we have choices because... Back then, kings became kings because they were descendants of someone. So it wasn't really, which from can what go, I see, which can go too much of a vote. It was it, no, it wasn't a vote at all. It's it's purely by by a bloodline thing, which God does a lot of things in bloodline. And again, it's it's whether you vote for the person or they come by ascension is that's not really important because either way they can fall. And either way, they can stop following God. And either way, they can make decisions that are, that are not the right decisions if they don't heed the voice of God. There's one thing that I know is if I was in a leadership position like that, I would make sure that I had many prophets around me, <laughs> many people that could hear from God. Many accurate prophets because we know about false prophets too. That, that's why I said prophets because if you're false, you're not a prophet. Sorry. <laughs> I would, I would, it would be very important to me to make sure that I had... The right counsel. The right, the right co- counsel around me. Because it's impossible to be in that position and not make a mistake. Because there's information that you don't know. But if you have God amongst in your midst, and you have the people that God has used, uh, that uses, uh, that God uses as a mouthpiece, you can't go wrong. It's impossible. Amen. So now, those who are listening to Blaine, he has an accent. Because he is from South Africa. Because <laughs> I, I can hear people in my head now like, where is he from? Where is he from? He's from South Africa. I'm originally from South Africa, yes. Is it Petura? What? I'm, I'm, just, I'm from South Africa. I don't want to okay. give out too many personal details on myself. I understand. So, um, we covered the importance of being led by God on who to vote in office and the importance of having wise counsel around uh, for those who are looking to obtain office the importance of having wise counsel around you i agree and wise counsel comes from people who are connected to the lord uh, it's good to have uh, intellectual knowledge uh, some intellectual knowledge of the things in this world but to have foreknowledge uh, only the lord knows what's going on in the future and i believe he of course you have some of these um what is they call warlocks and witches and all of that and they get information from familiar spirits familiar spirits are demonic spirits who follow family bloodlines and they give information but even with that is limited only the lord is all knowing and all seeing and he can give accurate information every time he don't miss See, now, if people miss it ain't because of god that's not because of god mm-hmm. now here's here's an interesting thing that i'd like to throw out there and i'm sure i'm going to get a lot of heat for this which is fine i'm so used to this by now um God could, in some cases, very well put somebody in that role, in that leadership role, that isn't a believer, but that God knows will help fulfill part of the task that he has at hand. Mm-hmm. Whatever that may be. It might, it might be helping the people. It might be a financial thing. Whatever the case may be. God could put people in positions that are not believers to help perform a certain task for a season. Yeah, because we've noticed in the Bible times situations have occurred to get people's attention. Um, we have to be very careful with being men pleasers and pursuing after affirmation from men. It has caused so much problems in biblical times when folks took their eyes off of the Lord and put their eyes on people. And their confidence was in people because people are just people. They will let you down. Yes. God won't. Yes. And so sir, sometimes things have happened for people to get reconnected to the true living God, to the one who can provide, who can heal, who can restore, who 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 can supply, he's the one that can do it. And so as circumstances are allowed sometimes, I said allowed, I didn't say that he creates all of them, but they are allowed yes. for people to get reconnected with him. And I believe we come into a time when I look at all these situations uh, that's going on in the world today, even globally, it is important to be connected to the Lord. Well, it, it's God is going to have his way somehow. Mm. We're either going to be 
connected and choose to come together because we want to be together or we're going to be driven together by fear. But one way or another, and that's f- I, I have not thought about that in so long, but one way or another, God is going to have his way. Amen. And when Blaine said he had not thought about that in so long, one of our dads, we call him our, we call him a father to us. He's a spiritual dad, a spiritual meaning somebody to oversee us and, yeah. and help and pray us through. But anyway, he mentioned that. And so when I heard that saying, he, we haven't heard it in a long time, but he stated how it was going to come through love or fear, but we were going to come together. And we would rather come through love, right? Yes, because by love, it would be, a willingness out of fear would be out of necessity. Unfortunately, we're leading ourselves directly into the fear, into the fear dungeon. I think so. So, Prophet Blaine, what what would you do in this fast um, in our conse- conse- consecration? <laughs> That's all right. What would you um, invite the people to focus on? What would be the most important thing you feel we should focus on during this time of prayer and fasting? What do I think is important to focus on? I think it's important for the people to see God on what they should be focusing on. Not because it's, that's not a cop out because I don't I don't want it to be on my, my head or because I mean no I don't know what God wants everybody to focus on. Um, that is not a clear solution, you know, a clear answer to me. But I do know. That if we seek or if we, I love, God has been dealing with me about inquiring of him. Mm. In a, a lot of times we make our request known, but that's not re- in, inquiring. Making our request now, known is a statement to God. This is, this is what I want, blah, 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 make your whole long laundry list. But inquiring is asking. Mm-hmm. And if we inquire of the Lord, Lord, what is it you would have me focus on? Because if he's having you focus on that, you better know he has somebody else focusing on the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's good. So if we ask God what we should be focusing on, that's what we should be focusing on. God could say, focus on the presidency and pray and fast and seek me about that. Who knows? It might be on the 24th hour of the third day that the Lord give you an answer on what you should say to the people regarding who the next leader would be. If it is the water crisis, ask God what it is he wants you to focus on. It might be a local thing. It might be an international thing. It might be whatever it is. Inquire. I know for a fact that if you inquire, he will answer. Yes. It doesn't always have to take long. And some, sometimes it's instantaneous. You'll say, De- deal with this. You'll be like, sweet, I know what to deal with. And sometimes he doesn't say anything. Well, you have one or two choices. Keep inquiring or just wait. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's really good. Blake, can you pray for the people? Sure, <laughs> sure. Father, I just thank you so much for the listeners and viewers on today, God. Lord, I ask that every single viewer and listener, God, will will know by the Spirit, God, what they should be focusing on in these three days, God. Whether it be personal, whether it be local, whether it be a community issue, God. Lord, I ask that you reveal yourself to them in a way that is understandable. Father, I ask that you reveal to each and every single person that is listening or viewing right now, God, what it is that you would desire or that you would like them to focus on, God, and that answers will be revealed by what you show them, God. Let a, let a manifestation and a change will come because of their prayer, praying and fasting, God. Yes. Lord, I ask that you put a hunger in each and every single one of these people that have chosen to take part in the a past, take part in the Esther project, God. That I just as Esther went before the king and a manifestation and a changing came, that a change also come at the end of these three days, God. I ask for manifestations of things that you desire to change in this world, God, to come to pass. Manifestation of changes that you want to see in individual people. And God, even a repenting of people that need to repent. God, I ask you that you hover over each and every single person that is a part of this praying and fasting and whatever other praying and fasting is going on right now for your glory, God. Father, I thank you that you always watch over us, that you always give us what to do, and that you always answer our prayers, regardless of what the answer may be. I thank you, Lord, for watching over each and every single person today, and that they be blessed 
and that you continue to be a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. And so um, just a quick overview uh, for those who are watching us through Ustream. Um, we normally archive all of our programs. So there should be an image up soon, right? Image up soon on Worship Center Radio. You're looking at me because I'm supposed to be <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, he is. We'll just archive it on the Dr. Rutherford page. Okay. All right. Website? Or your page on the radio station. Okay, on the radio station. Should be going up on YouTube, too. Wine does the video and Blaine does the audio. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we want to share the information with others to invite them to join in with us as we continue to seek the Lord uh, concerning his heart and what he would have us to pray, to know, to do in this season. We feel it's important for his direction and his instruction. I am Dr. Rhoda Berth. This has been Prophet Blaine. Now, Prophet Blaine can be heard on worship Center Radio. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tell us about, uh, can you give us a little bit of what you're going to talk about today? I'll give the title. Last week, and I, this is actually, I'm glad that I'm able to do this. Last week, uh, the Lord had me uh, put the program on the radio about the simplicity of His Word and His promises. This week uh, will be uh, the outside of time. I wanted to call it outside of time. The Lord said, no, it's the outside of time. So I'm not 100% certain exactly what He's going to reveal, but this is about doing things outside of the timing and the will of God. R r while He does promise things, there's also a timing when, he, when things are going to take place. Um, so that'll be on at 9 p.m. tonight. But I keep feeling to ask you this. Um, I don't know if somebody's listening that needs this, but bringing it back to why did God ask you to do the Esther project? Oh, that's good. That's a good question. Um, doesn't mean that you, I mean, if I stumped you, well, I, the Bible said I keep, <laughs> uh, I, I kept hearing to ask you, um, bring it back to why, what was the reason that God gave you the Esther project? I, I felt like an SOS inside of me. Um, okay. <laughs> it was like, we need your help. And I believe there is power in the corporate body coming together praying. There are some That's things his that, word. There are some things we can handle as individuals, and there are some things we have to pull together and pray and get God's attention. Um, I, I felt there was like a, a need. I mean, he is the supplier of all of our needs according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There's a serious need for a change in the positive. Because there's a lot of negativity going on. There's a lot of stuff that's happening right now. And we need God like never before. So now that's... I'm, now I'm going to drop this prophetically after you've said sure. that, the SOS. I feel, and I mentioned Kim Clement because that's one of the people that I follow. A lot of the time for people that do follow Kim Clement, he'll do a boots on the ground thing. Long in advance before something breaks out. Oh, that's good. All right. And you're feeling an SOS on the praying and fasting. So... Knowing the boots on the ground thing, isn't it important that we pray and fast now? What could it prevent yes. that is about to happen? That's good. What could it stop that is, about to, that is about to happen or trying to happen? What plans are in motion? Hear me by the Spirit. Yes. What plans are in motion that God is trying to prevent or stop? Amen. Very good. We're going to meditate on that. We're going to meditate on that. That's that's excellent. Because <laughs> I don't pretend to know it all. The Bible said we see in part and hear in part. I'm just talking about the part that came to me. Um, we are going to have to go because our next show is due to come on on Worship Center Radio. And that is the Detroit Prayer Revival. It comes on at 3 o'clock. My special guest is Evangelist Tanya Johnson, who also has a uh, program. She's a broadcaster on Worship Center Radio, and hers is the Angel of Melodies, right? Yes. Angel of Melodies, she comes on Thursday. I believe it's 7 o'clock, Juan. 7 o'clock Thursday, she comes on. Please stop by our website. It's the bomb. www.worshipcenterradio.net. Uh, so for. <laughs> he made me practice, y'all. <laughs> He kept saying, now, what is the radio again? What is the TV again? <laughs> um, so for those who tune in through TWCN.faith or through the live stream, TWCN live stream, thank you so much. We're going to come back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, my special guest will be um, Prophet Ian, a young prophet, uh, just awesome man of God. He'll be on here all of our platforms, 2 o'clock Easter Standard Time. What is that, GM5? That's okay. Just Easter Standard Time. That's all right. 
I, I thank you for having me on today. I really appreciate well, thank that. Thank you and, for coming. And the, I feel the t the two prophetic moments that I that I felt prophetically. Um, it's something. This little nuggets that people should hold on to. What is God trying to prevent? It, we're not just praying and fasting just because. Amen. Agreed. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for those two. Okay, so go to the website, Dr. Rhoda Bird. Uh, wait a minute. Yes, no, yes. that's wrong. www.drrhodabird.com slash Esther Project. You should see them in the studio like, get it right. <laughs> so drrhodabird.com slash Esther Project to learn more about the activities, what the agenda is for this week. Or go by my Facebook page, Dr. Rudder Bird. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the live stream. And for those who are listening through Ustream, uh, watching us through Ustream, we'll see you at 3 o'clock. Blessings, everybody.